Hello and welcome back to the Flower Gold Wizard channel. Today, I'm gonna to show you guys how I made Jocelyn. Who's Jocelyn? This is Jocelyn. It's my homemade classifier. It is the best classifier in the world. <laughs> At least in my opinion. All right, now I made this myself. I do make a number of items, uh, gold prospecting related myself. Uh, a, because I can, B, because it's fun, and C, it's cheaper. Now, this particular unit, I had made one before, and it was round, and it worked just fine. But right in this area, area right here, I, I used it so darn much, I, you know, where the handle part is, I made it a little bit thinner, like the handle was up just a little bit more up in this area here, and it kind of broke right there. So I got rid of it, and I made a new one. And I thought, you know, why have round sides? Uh, for instance, if you took a cup of coffee and it was full to the brim and you spun that cup of coffee like this here, well, you're not going to spill any water because it's just moving, the cup's moving around the coffee. Well, and I, and I kind of thought that maybe some of my uh, material that I was shoveling into my classifier is doing the same thing, just kind of sliding around the material when I spun this. So I made this one with, uh, you know, angled sides on it. Uh, it's not a perfect uh you know hexagon or whatever the heck you'd call it but uh it's the best i came up with for the limited amount of time i spent making this on the fly and um it, it was a little easier than i thought uh, you just need a couple of tools and you can make one of these yourself and we're gonna do that we're gonna do that today and uh, i thought this would really jostle the material around and it does these sides push push the material back and forth on on them on itself in there and it turns it around and if you notice if you put it in the pail on the sides the water is getting around there rather than having a classifier the same size as your pail and the water is you know it's helping the jostling action and you know that's what this thing is doing it's jostling around so one or two of my commenters actually Name this thing Jocelyn. So it's stuck. That there is Jocelyn. Her and Mercedes get along real well. That's my hooker. So we're going to take this here piece of two foot by two foot metal. It's, um, I'm not even sure what gauge it is, maybe 16th or something. It's pretty good and rigid, and it's got eighth inch perforated holes. We're going to turn that into Jocelyn's sister. Here's a look at some of the tools you might need for making Jocelyn. I've got a couple of cutters laying around here or there. I got a little file for some of the rough edges and some banging type equipment, and some grabbing, and here's a cutting uh, blade on there with a little grinder. But the most important tool, we'll go ahead and grab that right out of the fridge of one. The fridge of wonder is gone. It stopped working. Now I have the cooler of wonder till I get a new fridge. But we still have our meat. And we still have the most important tool of all, Pabst Blue Ribbon. That's right. So I'm going to get everything ready to go. And we're going to make another Jocelyn. All right, the first thing you want to do is determine how tall you want Jocelyn. Now, if my Jocelyn is just a little bit shorter than that pail right there. And that's just fine. Now, this particular style of class fire works like this here now I drop it in there and it doesn't go all the way to the bottom I did that on purpose so I didn't have to try to reach in the pail and and knuckle that thing out of there now I could take care of that by adding another handle on there on this side I just don't happen to have an extra handle so I didn't um, and this is just fine this little handle right here and I don't mind that one bit so what I did is I made the made Jocelyn just a little bit bigger than the bottom of the pail. Now, if you'll notice, the top of the pail is about a half an inch wider this way than it is at the bottom of the pail. 
I'm assuming most pails are that way. Every pail that I have does the same exact thing. That way you can slide this pail inside of this pail. See that? Now if I pull that up, you'll notice the difference right there. It's uh, maybe three quarters of an inch right there. Okay, so this is the pail that I wanna use to make Jocelyn. This is my out and field pail. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make another one just like that. I'm gonna make it just a little bit, just a little bit wider than the bottom, the, uh, AKA the, sh the smallest uh, diameter of the pail here. So this doesn't sink all the way to the bottom, like that. I like the, I like how it rides in there just like that. And it doesn't hurt that pail none. And it works really well for me. So let me grab a marker and I'll show you how to do that. All right, now the first thing you want to do is put your pail down on something you can draw a circle with. All right, now I just did it on my concrete floor. Well, I walk around here enough that it's gonna get worn off anyway, so I don't really care. If you don't care for that, uh, throw it on a chunk of plywood or some plastic or paper or whatever. So I just take my marker here and I'll draw a line right around my pail, just like that. Now, I have the outside of the pail drawn on my floor. Now that's already bigger than the inside of the pail, plus one. So when I start making my marks on the floor for the bends for my classifier, I'm going to make them all the way to the outside edge of this circle right here. And when I do my bending, I'm going to make sure that I get everything lined up to the outside. That way it, does, that way it can't sink all the way to the bottom of the pail because I'm making it probably, probably right around in this here area size where it's going to stop going down right about there. And that's just what I want because I'm using a 12 inch piece of steel. That's a 24 by 24 and I'm gonna cut it in half so I can make one whole Jocelyn out of one square piece. <laughs> and I got that piece at Menards, by the way. So let me get set up for the next step and we'll take it from there. Back in a bit. All right, now for marking out your bends, now go ahead and take a look at Jocelyn here, all right? Now you'll see it's a little bit longer right here than the other sides right here, which are equal five inch distances. All right, now that just came about because two feet doesn't go all the way around. I had to, this is one, this is two feet right here, this one section, and that's just kind of how it came out. And I had to cut another piece off of that's the next strip to make this end here. And that's just fine with me. I didn't care if it was perfect or not. I just wanted these, these angles in here to push that material around in there, jostle if you will. So, you know, you guys can make your own it perfect if you want, but I really don't see the need for it. And it fits in my pail and it works perfectly. So I'll show you what I did. Cause I started out on five inches, five inches from edge to edge in a straight line, just like this right here, right there, outside to outside. And I'll take my marker and I'll draw it on there. And I'll take from one point to that, the next five inches is right there. Just like this. And the next five, uh, where's that darn thing? Is right here, right there. There's five, and I'll do another one right over here. This is not science by any means. I am a bricklayer, I am a wood butcher, and I am not a metal guy. <laughs> but I do what I can. And then I'll take that, and put that right there. One, two, three, four, one more side. Let's get that on there. And five right there all right there's five one two three four five and here's the last side right here which is five and a quarter and that's just fine with me so the next thing i'm gonna do is cut my steel all right now i got a two by four laying on my floor here so i can drop my steel on it and cut it in half with my grinder 
All right, now this, like I said, I got from Menards and it comes with four edges, obviously, because it's square, but only two of them have this nice, smooth, rigid, finished edge on there. And one at opposite ends, and this is the cut end. Now those are quite sharp, and you wanna be careful, careful for that. And when you're cutting, you wanna make sure that you're cutting it this way, so the, the, the long, rigid, smooth ends are not being cut in half, because those are gonna be the top and the bottom of your classifier. So now I've got it on that two by four, that way I can cut and I won't cut into my concrete floor. Let me get the grinder going and we'll take a look at it. Oh, best grinder ever. All right, I'm cutting this baby right down the middle and I'm just gonna use this edge of the two by four as like a little screed or a little guide that I can uh, run my grinder down. So I'll just go ahead and take this piece of steel and put it right on the 12 on one corner. I'll put it on the 12 on this corner and I'll let her lay. Don't forget your beer goggles. Now I'm gonna take this chunk of steel right here that we're gonna use, all right? And I'm gonna put another piece of two by on the other end so it sits nice and flat. Then I can measure five inches just like we had on our floor down there when we measured our, our uh, form for our bends. And I'm gonna take this piece of two by four, I'm gonna put it right on top of that two by four and I'm gonna screw it down. Just like this. Now that metal's in there good and tight. I can't pull it out. And I'll double check my five inch measurement and it's right on the money, right exactly on the money. Now I can bend this metal or this metal with this wood sandwiched in there in a nice, easy fashion. See that? I'll just push down on it and it's got a nice tight bend, okay? Now what I wanna do is I'll just go ahead. Now I'm gonna make sure that's bent a little more than I think it needs to be. Just like that. Now I'll just loosen these up a little bit. Like this. And I'll slide that out of there. Well, ish. <laughs> Let me put that on number two. There we go. There. We got that loosened up. And we've got our first bend and I'll show you what I do with it right now. All right, now here's where that form on the floor comes in handy. Now I bent this, I hope, just a little bit more than need be. Now what I wanna do is take a straight edge, my long edge right here, and follow one of these lines right here. All right, I'll put this bend right on the corner right there, just like that. Okay, now as you can see, this wing is bent a little bit too far, but that's just fine. I'll just take, lay this on the floor and push down on it just a little bit. And I'll put it right back where it was. And I did it on the first one. Now we have our first bend right there and our second bend right there, right to the line. And I'll pull this camera off of there and I'll show you a little closer. Just like that. See, there's my lines. Whoops, there's my finger. <laughs> there's my lines right there. We have a nice straight bend right to the lines we marked on the floor. Now I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that process. I'm gonna put this piece of steel right up on this two by four again, just like that with the bend down. And I'm gonna measure five inches again from here to here. See, I got a little crooked there. Too many PBRs, I think. That's all right, this is our top. That's all gonna be covered. So let me repeat that process a couple times. I'll get my five inches measured here, get my board nailed on here, and we'll make a nice tight bend. And on my shop, it's kind of hollow underneath here, and you need that a little bit, because this is gonna wrap right around there a little bit. And I'm gonna make all the bends on there until I get everything looking real nice. And we'll go from there, back in a bit.
Now, after repeating that process a couple of times, you can see we're well on our way. Now, I did get that one a little bit rounded, but that's just fine. We're out there digging dirt. Now, as you can see, it's not exactly perfect to those lines every single place. See that? The most important thing to me is having these edges come out to the outside edge of that of the line we drew so it doesn't go all the way to the bottom of the pail. And that's fine. Even if it doesn't, even if it's a little bit smaller sitting there, you can still go ahead and open this right up like this and it's bigger, all right? Now the next step involves the other half of this steel that we cut. Now we're gonna make our end cap right here, which is gonna consist of the end and two little wings that are gonna be about an inch longer on each side so we can screw them together. Let's do that. First thing we're gonna have to do, grab our tape measure. Right here. Mm -hmm. And then we'll grab our beer. <laughs> you know what I mean. All right, we'll yank this baby apart. Now, as you can see, we're already on our all our outside edges. So we're sitting real good. Now our opening right here is about five and three quarters right there, you see that? So we're gonna wanna add an inch or an inch and a quarter to each side, all right? So we'll go an extra two and a half inches onto five and three quarters. That comes out to like 19 or something. Well, you get it. Do a little math and you got her. Let's uh, get my two by four back up and we'll cut a piece that fits that. Back in a bit. All right, we've got our end cap all made. And now, as you can see, to fill that hole right there, I've got it about an inch and a quarter-ish on each side, maybe an inch and three-eighths, so I can make the bends. Let me put that down right here and right here in this thing standing up on there. And we're going to fold that together and screw it to this thing to make, to make our class fire. Let me go ahead and set up the... The bender, <laughs> this thing actually turned out pretty darn good. You just leave that one a little loose, pull that over, screw this end down, it's tighter and tight. Man, I tell you, that PBR sure makes you think of the best stuff. All right, here's our piece. Now, as you can see, that turned out pretty darn good the way I made it. I don't think I have to do any adjusting. It fits together quite nicely, and it looks remarkably similar to the other Joslin. Uh, it's got one longer side right here where I have the end cap made. And it's not a perfect pattern as, as you can see, but it's gonna do what we want it to do guaranteed. Now what I can do is I'll just set that down. Grab this here pail. And I'll hold that together a little bit. Like such, like how I'm gonna nail it together and I'll put it in this pail. And it stops, oh, I would say three inches off the bottom or so. So what I'll probably end up doing is I'd like it to sit up a little bit higher as I'll just open this up just like this a little bit more. I'll just pull it apart a little bit. That's just fine. We'll put it in the pail and it stops right there about four inches shy. That's right where I want it. So now I know that that's where I can attach this onto here well one way or the other <laughs> just like that now that's where that inch and a quarter comes in handy when all these holes because i can adjust where i put the screw in there this way just like that so let's do that all right now for attaching the plate to the classifier i'm going to use some stainless steel machine screws all right now they're the same kind and just in case you're going out to buy uh, some buy some equipment here, you know, screws and such. An easy way to make sure you get the right stuff. See, it says number 10 right there, number 1024. Number 1024. We got nuts and wash or screws here. Those will match. Now, I'm assuming that a politician owns this company because there's four nuts and three screws per bag. Those screw balls. All right, let's get this baby attached. All right, as you can see here, We've got our end cap all attached right here with th uh, six screws, three in each side, and it's looking pretty darn good. Drop it in our pail. 
and it stays about three, three and a half to four inches, maybe, eh, not quite four, I'd say three, three inches above. That's right where we want it. So in case I just want to put handles in here, I still can. And I can reach in there and grab them and I don't have to dig inside the pail for them or nothing like that. So the next step is going to be making our bottom. All right, now to make our bottom, we have our, our unit here and we have our leftover piece. I'll just take this and I'll set it right on there. Now I'm gonna take the long side right here and I want the flap, because we're gonna make this to go on the inside of this, not the outside. Now I'm gonna make this about an inch bigger than the bottom piece all the way around. So I'll take my marker and I'll put it right on that piece and I'll mark the inside just like this, just like that. Okay, whoops, you get the picture. So there's our pattern right there. Now I'm gonna take my grinder and I'm gonna cut an inch around all the way right here, just like that. So I can bend those up to fit inside of here and we'll screw that to the bottom. Now here's our bottom right here, what's gonna go on the inside. So we have our outside edges all cut about an inch to inch and a quarter or so around and we still have our marks, our marker on there, the shape of the inside. All right, now it's just gonna be a matter of, well, letting it cool down, A, and putting it back in our little form bender here and bending these up. But before you do that, you're gonna to wanna to take a little, a little snips right here like this one, and you're gonna to wanna to make cuts right on these corners, just like this, just like that. That way you can bend them up and you'll have nice straight corners, see that? So let me cut all these corners here and then we'll get this baby bent up and we'll fit it into our glass fire. Back in a bit. You go ahead and bend those right down at a at a 90 degree angle just like that because that's how it's going to sit in your basket now i'm going to do every other one that way these it just kind of doesn't work if you try to do one right next to another so i'll go ahead and i'll do this next one right here just like such put it on my marker lines right there and hammer it down Now we've got this thing looking pretty darn good and what you wind up with is a couple of wings here and there. Now I bent those ahead of time so they kind of fit in there and I just grabbed a little, grabbed a little pliers and I just bend these around like that so everything fits together. Well then you just grab the sheer pliers and you smash it together just like that. Look at that nice bend in it. I'll go ahead and grab this one and just smash it together. Look how good that's looking. All right, maybe I should get a new career, bricklaying versus metalwork. Well, I don't know about that. There we are. Now we got one left here. Get that baby bent. That looks pretty darn good to me. Let's see if it fits in our classifier. All right, now I've got that fit inside of the classifier. And as you can see, it's not exactly perfect. But that's no big deal. I'll just take my hammer. Now, none of this is screwed together except the outside. I'll just take my hammer. And as you can see, these two lines are, for the most part, parallel. I'll set one down right there. Now, this hammer this baby a little bit flatter than it was. All right. Just like that. 
I'll hammer those down flat. Oh, it slides right in and out of there nicely. You know, you see all that came together a little bit better. I'm going to take just a couple of minutes and I'm going to make these edges look a little bit better than they are. And this kid baby is getting close. Back in a bit. All right, we've got our bottom all attached. I'll show you the inside. Looks pretty nice and clean in there. And those short little uh, screws and washers won't get in the way of anything. This baby is solid as solid can be. This is the best classifier in my opinion. All we got to do now is we can either cut some, some holes in here. Let me grab Jocelyn one time. Right here. Don't get jealous, little lady. Now I just cut a square in this stuff, this last one I made, and I put some duct tape around there so it had just a little bit thicker of a handle right here. Then I slathered some JB Weld on there, and that's a nice smooth edge. Now I did sand, grind it down with a with a small file so there's no sharp edges, but I thought that JB Weld would really make a nice smooth edge, and it did. It worked great. Um, for this one here, I'm not going to cut channels in it. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and get another set of handles like this here. Now this is just a little handle you can get for any drawer or whatever, and it comes with a little screw. Now this screw fits right inside of here, like this here, one way or the other, and it just screws right onto this thing here. If I could get it to work, just like that there. Now that other screw will go on this one here. And you got nice handles that fit outside of your bucket. You don't have to reach your hand in there or nothing. This baby is awesome. I don't know what I'm going to do with it just yet, but I'll think of something. Back in a bit. And while I got you on the horn here, I'm going to grab another beer out of the fridge of wonder. That's right. <laughs> oh, I tell you, I got to get a fridge. Let's just take a look at uh, March's Patreon stuff right here. Now I've got my five places. First place, second place, third, fourth, fifth. And we got a lottery. Now I apologize, my, my gold nuggets haven't arrived in the mail yet, but I got some giant gold nuggets coming for first and second place. You're gonna love them. Third place is gonna be three bags of pay dirt, channel sticker, and everybody gets one of these awesome agates from Gary over at Pirate Prospecting. Look at those bad boys. Those things are amazing. Amazing. But well, wait do you see those gold nuggets I got coming. In the lottery this month is a brand new bilge pump speed controller with alligator clips, a couple of spare fuses, and the tools to do it with. These things are awesome. You got to have one. Now, if you're going to be running, doing any kind of uh, precision uh, prospecting or uh, cleanups in your shop, you need one of them. That's a fact. So that's what's going on for March. And I'll try to get these nuggets posted before uh, the 15th when we do our typical drawing. And uh, wait till you see them bad boys. Well, and that's how you make the world's best classifier. I'm no teacher, and this isn't shop class. It's just my shop. Uh, with a couple of ingredients you can pick up at Menards or any other store, Home Depot, etc. Uh, you can make one too. As you can see, we used a limited amount of tools. I could have probably done that whole thing with the little hand snips, uh, but I just happened to have a grinder and it did make it a little bit easier. And I've done it before. Uh, hopefully uh, from some of the tips I gave you, you guys can make one too. They really do come in handy and it's gonna last a long, long time. Now, in case anybody caught a glimpse of that big pile of packages I got over there from people mailing me stuff for the Canon, etc., I promise I'm getting to it. Uh, it's extremely busy. Uh, I'm trying to get mining and doing a little bit of this and that, and I really wanted to get out a, a video of making Jocelyn over there, the world's best classifier. So until the next episode, like, share, subscribe. Please do leave a comment. It helps build my channel. Check out my Patreon page and wait till you see those nuggets. Flower Gold Wizards, oh. <laughs>